Hey biggies, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel and welcome to our first, and maybe favourite, pro Patreon subscribers brewery, Glen Affric. We're a long way from home, mate. <laughs> it's bloody freezing. I'm hanging, but I am very excited because of what we're doing today. Yeah, you've made the most of your our first ever trip to Liverpool together. <laughs> hey, what do you love about barley wine, man? <laughs> and we are brewing a non-pastry pastry stout. What? What? Uh, so we're going to be brewing a Tunnock's wafer inspired uh, imperial stout without using any wafer or caramel or chocolate. No it's adjuncts. None. Man, I just I just love Tunnock's wafers. I've easily smashed an eight pack in a single sitting. I cannot bloody wait. <laughs> they are amazing things. I don't know whether you should uh, have eight in one go. You shouldn't, certainly shouldn't have eight of the Imperial Stout we're brewing, because not only is it going to be a great Imperial Stout on its own, a pretty strong strength, it's then going to go into barrel and get even bigger in Speyside Whiskey Barrel, so that's super exciting. So, join us for this amazing video, educational about how to brew Imperial Stouts, about the power of malt, and about the power of us to wear exactly the wrong things while <laughs> brewing a beer. Unlike us, the Glen Affric team hadn't been out last night. Instead, they've been getting all the ingredients prepped, including around one metric tonne of malt. After a couple of fortifying tunnocks, we got mashing in, adding all those lovely grains to the warm water to convert and extract the sugar and delicious caramel biscuit and chocolate flavours. After all that, we'd earned a beer, so Johnny sat down with Craig and Joe to talk through the recipe we'd come up with. Cool, so we're all mashed in. Yep. That was a lot of fun. A lot of ton. Yeah. <laughs> There was only one, actually, thinking about it. One. Um, so we're going to sit down and have a chat about the recipe that we were formulating. But first, we should chat about this and crack this. So this yep. was the inspiration. When, when I tasted this beer at, at Brew London, I was like, that's, that's probably the best Imperial Stout I've had in a couple of years. Thank you. Um, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. This is our Kingsway Stout bourbon barrel-aged Russian Imperial Stout. Um, this was one of the early recipes for us when it came to our barrel aging program. So we knew we wanted to do a big Russian Imperial Stout. We knew we wanted to have that bourbon kind of esque flavor to it. Because yeah. obviously pretty inspired by Bourbon County and, and all the amazing stouts you can get from all that kind of stuff. So we knew we wanted to do something like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, worked it's hard on that all recipe that. and then we just left it in barrels to do its thing. Toasted coconut, hints yeah. of oak, yeah. loads of vanilla in. Loads, and, of, yeah. loads of vanilla in. And the actual beer itself, I thought had a lovely little caramel roasty note to it as well mm -hmm. yeah. so that's what inspired me when i emailed you guys said let's do a collaboration i want to do an imperial stout you guys were like super yeah uh, and i started talking about the flavors that i love to get into an imperial stout which is that kind of caramelly um sort of mid to dark chocolate milk dark chocolate yeah. 60 percent ish loads of biscuit character mm -hmm. kind of wafer character at which point you guys went well, we're Scottish. Yeah, it's basically a Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Tunnock's Biscuit. Caramel Wafer, yeah. To which I was then like, I don't want to make a pastry stout. Yep. Let's use the power of malt. So yep. how are we going to go about getting that character without throwing caramel or wafer in? Yeah, yeah, but the chocolate malt um, added kind of big backbone to the Imperial Stout. It kind of speaks for itself and giving the chocolate notes. Mm -hmm. um, but capturing the caramel character of the, of the beer, we've kind of gone for a full spectrum of the roasted um, caramel malts. Right. So hopefully we're going to capture from the caragold. From the tasting the brown rainbow of caramel. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Get that caramel, get that wafer in there. And you, you really think the malts are going to get that kind of wafery, biscuity, caramelly thing? Yeah, it's the biggest challenge in this recipe. Yeah. So that's why we've used things like loads of marasotto as well, because that classic kind of biscuit flavour. And then we've added in a load of toasted oats as well, which give it that kind of nutty character yeah. as well, kind of adds to it. Yeah. And we're also adding some muscovado sugar which Absolutely. we hope is going to add even more of that dark caramel, dark sugar kind yeah, of vibe. Yeah, definitely. Some more of that kind of rich kind of character that you get from, from that really dark caramel, so that really sticky kind of toffee kind of caramel. Yep. And so, <laughs> because of your immense barrel collection, it was also suggested that we should put some of it in can, half of it in can, yep. and we're going to put the other half into some whiskey barrels. Absolutely. Which is dead exciting. The first time we've ever done a barrel-aged beer on, on the Craft Beer Channel. How did, we, how did you guys pick the barrel? So we, we wanted Scottish. So yep. which barrels have you guys picked? So we've gone with Speyside Whiskey Barrels. Speyside's really unique in that it's got a lot more of the sweeter kind of characters. Yeah, kind of toffee notes. And a lot more toffee yeah. kind of sweeter notes compared to other things like 
what people may traditionally think, like peated whiskies and, and yeah. smoked whiskies and stuff like this has got much more of that sweet character, so it kind of lends itself much more to the style of beer that yeah. we're making already. And, I, and there's never been a peated Tunnock's wafer as far as I'm aware. No, so, no. Um, <laughs> no, that, I definitely that, that wouldn't like that been, idea. <laughs> been to brief, yeah. Yeah, so no, yeah. Went specifically with a really special space of barrels that are going to really give it that kind of sweet note. Yeah. Well, I'm dead excited to try the barrel aged version, but I'm also dead excited to try the wort, which should be just about to be ready so we can see whether your recipe's got that wafer and biscuit note yeah. um, and whether we've still got that chocolatey stuff as well, whether it's liquid, liquid tonics. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having us. Cheers. With the mash and sparge nearly done, we started the transfer to the kettle to boil and add the hops. Before then, though, we could sneak a taste of the beer so far. Obviously, it's much sweeter at this point because it's unfermented, but it gives a good indication of the malt flavours. So we've got to one of my favourite points of the brewing day. First favourite is the mashing and that smell. The second one is Craig just <laughs> weirdly raising the glass <laughs> of wort. So we get to taste how the mash came together, whether those wafery, caramelly, biscuity, chocolatey flavours are all there. And you reckon they are? I absolutely reckon they are, yeah. There's tons and tons of caramel on this already. I'd rather yep. you go and have a drink yeah. first. Oh yeah, there's loads of wafer, uh, wafer biscuitiness. Yeah. Nice sweet caramel. We'll have to see how much of that is sugar and how much of that is caramel flavors. No, absolutely. But at the moment, that that now tastes a lot like a Tonics wafer. Yeah. Um, we maybe should just package this now and call it a day. I don't know about that. There's plenty of complexity to be added during the boil and fermentation, but it was tasting delicious. With the hops safely added by Brad, we decided to take a quick tour of the brewery and tap room with Craig. We'll start off with the name. Um, that is, Glen Affric is actually a place, it's up in the Highlands. It's where our family holiday home is. We've okay. had it there for almost 10 years now. Um, we, we were initially looking at the project. We were gonna base the brewery up there. It's gonna be a bit of a retirement project for dad. As you can see, it's got a bit out of hand since then. A little bit bigger than a retirement project. <laughs> a little bit project. bigger than a retirement yeah. project. Uh, in the scope of looking at what we wanted to do with the brewery, yeah. um, we kind of changed what we wanted to do, but we still have that original space. We're in the process. We've recently knocked it down to build a bespoke facility up there as well. Um, but we've lived locally here in the world um, since 93. So we decided to actually move the space closer to home. I'm really impressed by your tap room. You've got 30 lines on. We do, and we've got 30 of our own beers on tap as well. Yeah, yeah we have a few reserved currently for um, kind of our barrel aid series uh -huh. that's coming out over the next like four or five weeks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, usually we've got 30 of our own different beers on, so we've got a pretty wide variety available here. It's our 30 hectolitre brew house. So this is kind of our main brew house. This is where we do all our production. We do have a little um, five hectolitre, 500 litre pilot kit um, that we do a good amount of brewing on as well. But this is like our main stage. This is where we brew the majority of our beer. I've got a stag's head actually. Really? It's not, it's not as nice as that one. It's yeah. a 12 point, that one, yeah. So it, was, it is a beast. Picked it up in an auction. <laughs> it's a big one. No. A bit of Highlands. Brought a bit of Highlands down. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Wow, the smell as soon as you come in is yeah. kind of amazing. Yeah, this is something like 250 barrels here in this, in this warehouse. We haven't done a full count yet. We've got a lot of beers in barrels here, and we've also got a lot of barrels waiting to go into barrels as well. So we've got a lot of beers waiting to go in here, um, particularly brewing, obviously. We've got our beer that we're doing today as well. Yeah, That's going yeah. in barrels as well. So you've got all kinds of barrels too, right? Yeah, we've got a, a wide selection of different whiskey barrels, um, different sizes, all the way from the standard, you know, 225s, all the way up to 550 big butts that are at the back there. Um, but yeah, we definitely wanted to have more of that Scottish whiskey, Scotch kind of connection, yeah. um, obviously with us being kind of far removed in terms of location, but it's very much, you know, our home. Yeah. Although I don't sound like I'm Scottish, I am from Scottish parents. Um, so it's, yeah, how do we bring some of that and kind of take our own spin on it? And that's exactly what we're doing here. It's the majority of the barrels that we've got here are all Scotch whiskey barrels. Right, now we've, uh, now we've established that you know what you're on about with barrels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go back in and see what's happening. Absolutely. They don't see things the same. With the tour done and the sugar being added by the brew team, Brad settled in to start looking at the design of the label, finding that fine line between homage and a lawsuit. Before it got far though, we were called over to help add the yeast and put the beer to bed. All we could do then was head home and wait for an update from Craig.
Hey everyone, Craig here. So obviously some time has passed since the guys have actually been over here to brew the beer. Um, but today is the day. We've transferred the beer into our bright tanks that you see behind us, but more importantly, we've been putting it into barrels today. We've done two so far. We've got another two, maybe three more to go. Um, it's just in the process of moving and getting the other barrels in there so we can fill those up as well. And then hopefully tomorrow, in the next couple of days, we're gonna be canning the metric tanks. Canning went to plan and oh my God, would you look at that. Once all packed up, a few cans were sent out to me and Brad and we could hardly contain our excitement. Bradley, did you get it? I've got mine. Hey, yes mate. Hey, there it is. How good does that can look? That's not bad, is it, for a half an hour <laughs> ripping off the Tunnock's label? <laughs> Should we give it a go? I'm dead excited. I don't, I don't even want to ask how you are. I just want to crack it. What a day of the year. What, what a day to drink such a large beer. Such a warm <laughs> day for a 9.5% Imperial style. So that looks great, doesn't it? Nothing wrong with that. Um, I had a call from Craig while we were deciding carbonation. We've kept carbonation quite low to help that thick, treacly body, um, but it's got a nice head on it. Ooh. So the first thing I get is milk chocolate, which is right on. Lots of caramel, oh, yeah. lots of, it's lots of, it's quite fruity actually, more fruity maybe. You, you, you can't listening. smell through your ear, Brad. I'm listening to the beer, it, it, it's very, it, it's very uh, lovely little fizzy bubbles. Lovely, let's give it a go. You get that, you get that initial chocolate hit and it's followed up by the, by the lovely caramel on the palate. Do you know what? I think it's pretty bang on. I think maybe it's just a little bit too fruity, maybe a little bit too thin, but I think with the carbonation, that's actually fairly nicely balanced. The one thing that, that surprised me is the amount of bitterness. Yeah, it's pretty bitter. Did we overhop it? <laughs> that is, of all the things that was happening on the day, that was not a risk I thought we'd have, but it might just be a little bit too bitter. Yep, yeah, I'll have one, please. There's only one in there, mate. I bought this uh, a few days ago. I ate the four before the video. I was like chomping at the bit to have the fifth one, but I had to save it for this. I did the same thing. I just had very poor impulse control. So mine are gone. You did eat it. So that, that's my favourite chocolate bar, pretty much. So your favourite chocolate bar to watch your friend eat over Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, this is a niche, a niche uh, web activity now. That's really not bad. The caramel is all there. The thing we were aiming for is definitely there. A bit more milk chocolate would have been nice. A little bit more body would have been nice and a little bit less bitterness. But that, that is 80% of the way to liquid wafer. I can imagine the, just, just eating those together, smashing them together, that bitterness is going to disappear. And you're just going to get the, the lovely, crunchy... Um, wafer, which is a, a little bit kind of biscuity, um, soaking up all of that lovely sh uh, fruitiness from the beer mm. and just combining to a, a wonderful, harmonious lump in your orifice. <laughs> You're basically describing what's happening, maybe not in the poetic terms I'd want. So we'd both call our attempt to make liquid tunnocks without any unusual adjuncts a sweet, sticky success. The only way for you to know for sure though, is to pick some up yourself. Then you have been.